Hello and thank you so much for joining our broadcast today. I am so excited and I'm very expectant. We have a friend here today, Dr. Dennis Burke, who's going to be sharing some things about mind games. And boy, are we going to get into it. Later on in the broadcast, we're going to give you some information on how to contact Dr. Burke. Uh, so let's just get right into it. Dr. Burke, uh, could you tell us just a little bit about your ministry? What's God doing in your life? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad I'm here. And uh, thanks for letting me be a part of this broadcast uh, today. You know, God's had me in ministry for a lot of years now. I started this in 1979, and I've been traveling the world, many parts of the world, and uh, came to find out early on as a believer that if I could take hold of the promise that God has made in Scripture, just simple ideas of what God has done through the new birth, if I could take hold of of his word and to take hold of it above the circumstances that are going on around me, yes. take faith in what God has said, I found that God would impart things in my life and change things and do the supernatural to lift my life up out of the kind of trash that I had been living in. Praise God. And uh, I found that out early on. I was just 17 years old when I gave my life to the Lord and and came out of, you know, like all of us have, came out of sin and came out of a, a, a drug kind of life. And, you know, I was in California running the beaches and, <laughs> and just living, you know, uh, a, a rebellious life uh, for a number of years. And at 17, during the Jesus movement, really, of the uh, late oh, yeah. 60s and early 70s, for me it was 1971. Yes, sir. A lot was happening in Southern California. It was happening worldwide, I know, but for me in Southern California, I came to find that Jesus was the real deal and that he was exactly what I had been looking for. Yes. And uh, so I locked in to not only a life of loving the Lord and being free from the kind of things that had been heavy and bondage in my own life, but I came to find within the first few months, really, Wow. That a life of faith in God's word is how you would shift and renew things in your own soul and in your own thinking. Oh, that's so good. And uh, that just started me on a journey that I've been on ever since. And uh, my <laughs> wife, Vicki, and I have uh, been at this now since 1979 doing what we're still doing now. Praise the Lord. And uh, going into places just like this and mm -hmm. places, uh, conferences and ministry around the world being able to teach and, and minister things uh, that God has given us to do. Well, we're thankful for your supply. You were in our church yesterday for two powerful meetings, and uh, the Lord just did so much, and we're just thankful for the uh, residual effect that's going to just ripple through our, through our church family. And I just have news for you today. Uh, one thing for sure is that Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever, Hebrews 13 it says. So uh, I just encourage you. He's talking about 1971. My, my dad started talking about things in the 60s, and I found out for me it's the same today as it's always been. So grasp hold of this by faith and receive with us today. So Dr. Burke, what do you have uh, to talk to us about today? What, what are we going to discuss? Well, I think one of the most powerful things that I've come to understand over the years, and I started this, as I said, many years ago, but I think one of the most powerful things to lay hold on is to realize that what God has deposited on the inside of each of us as believers at the new birth, yes. when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, there is an infusion of the Spirit of God that lodges on the inside of us. We're literally born in a brand new way, redeemed by Jesus. Here's the terms we use in Christianity. We're <laughs> born of the Spirit of God and come alive to God. But there is, there is an aspect of growing up in God that is vital for every one of us to maintain. And that is that we are thinking in terms that cooperate or harmonize with what God really has done or what he says. That's good. There is, you know, as you guys know, but as I've had to learn, it, there is a, a difference between the spirit of, of a human being and the soul. We are triune beings. That's one of those theology words that I used in Bible <laughs> school that I only get to use at times like this. <laughs> triune, God is triune. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we are created in God's image and in His likeness. We are also 
a triune being, spirit, soul, and body. And that's how God designed man in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. Uh, and yet what we know from Scripture is there was a disconnect in the Garden through sin. And Adam and Eve both died just like God said they would. That's if right. they were to sin, <clears throat> eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were going to die. That's right. He said in the day you eat it. That day. <laughs> that day you're going to die. That's right. Now, here's what happened as you read it. You realize that what God was talking about was not a physical death. They didn't just keel over and drop dead in the garden the moment they ate it. But there was the spiritual disconnect and yes. spiritual death yeah. where they disconnected really yeah. from... Separation from their father. Separation from God. Yeah. And when they did, they lost that whole spiritual side of their relationship with the Father God. Yes. And uh, they turned from a three-part being to really just a two-part being. That's right. Spiritually, were, they were dead, men and women. They were dead spiritually. Yes, sir. And, uh, and we have Adam to thank for this. Now, mm -hmm. it's possible that in heaven there's going to be heavy security around Adam <laughs> because we all have questions. <laughs> all right, we know it's all about the love of Jesus, so it, I guess that wouldn't be the case. Yeah. But, man, we have questions. What was Adam right. thinking when he yielded to himself to betray the Lord and right. to take that fruit that was, he was told not to take? That's right. And, uh, and there were a lot of reasons for it. We won't get into all of these kind of details. It gets quite interesting, though. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing study. But uh, just suffice it to say that this disconnect caused a spiritual death and separation. Right. And it meant that anything that Adam and Eve would gain, and really from that time forward to this day, if people were going to connect with God, they would have to do it by faith. Yes. And now by faith in Jesus and what Jesus has done. So here's the summary of the gospel that I love. Satan came and messed up what God had designed, and Jesus came and fixed up what God has designed. That's pretty straight to the point, right? That just pretty well <laughs> summarizes the whole concept. Yeah. There's a lot of details in there, but Jesus fixed it. Where by faith in Jesus and the new birth, Sin has been conquered and destroyed, and suddenly now there's that infusion of the life of God so that every person has access to all of God's resources. Glory be to God. That God has become Father active in our life yes. by the Spirit of God because we have faith in what Jesus did. Boy, that's the, that's the truth. And you know, uh, spirit, soul, body, that's one of my favorite subjects. I uh, teach a lot here at the church on spirit, soul, body. And one of the things that I found um, in dealing with people over this last uh, you know, 10, 15 years in ministry mm -hmm. is um, a lot of people really think that they have a lot of spiritual problems when they really aren't spiritual problems at all. Uh, in fact, they're, they're who God made them to be. If, if you're a believer, if you're born again, you're as righteous right now as Jesus is because it's his righteousness, uh, the righteousness of God in Christ. You've been made to be that, the Bible says. Um, so it's really not a problem spiritually. I mean, it can be, uh, you know, we can get out of God's will in certain areas, but it's not a... Um, a problem of not being pleasing to the God, to the Father spiritually because Jesus satisfied that. So it shifts to the mind, uh, will, and emotions, and things like that in the soul. And uh, and I, I I just we haven't talked about this broadcast much, but based on what you shared yesterday, I think I know a little bit about where you're going. Uh, these mind games really started with Eve in the garden when when Satan came and said, "Hath God not said?" Right, started right. to get, get her to question and, and get over into these mind games and questioning God. Um, so talk a little bit about what this is and, and uh, what the Lord's been dealing with you about. Well, the, that's the issue really is, is uh, you just detailed it great. It is that Satan really plants things in a person's mind just like he did Eve. He yes. said, as you said, as God said, and then he contradicted what God said. Right. And he planted a different seed. He even used few statements that God had said, but he twisted it. Yes. And really, that's the kingdom of darkness, isn't it? Not, that's right. Not only to lie, but to twist truth to where it has a sense of being possible that it is true. That's so good. But it is a lie. Yeah. It's a twisting of the truth. And so these games are played. In fact, Satan came and played mind games even with Jesus. That's right. Matthew 4? Matthew yes, 4. Yes, absolutely. When, uh, and, and in Luke where 
It talks about how Jesus came up out of the waters of baptism with John and was led into the wilderness for yes, 40 days he spent out there. And we don't have a lot of detail as to everything that happened, but what we do have some detail about is the game Satan began to play with Jesus. Right. And so here's what we know. If, if, uh, if Satan's going to try to play these mind games with Jesus himself, then he's playing mind games with us also. He's doing everything possible to twist our thinking so that we are still defeated, even though we have this power of God on the inside. We're not skilled at releasing what God has placed within us when we are facing the hardships and the temptations and the deals that Satan brings our way. And uh, these games really do make the difference between whether you're going to find the power of God flowing in your life. Yes. Or whether you're just going to have God's power but not really experience the kind of victory that God wants. That's excellent. The soul is made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions of our inner life. It's that inner dialogue that goes on. That's a soulish kind of thing typically. And uh, the fears that we face so many times, these aren't spiritual things as much as they are soulish. And it's vital that we recognize that while we are born of the Spirit of God, as believers, that we still have to wrestle with these kinds of issues yes. so that we're not shutting down what God has done for us yes. and preventing the flow of God out of our innermost being. That's good. But that we are taking hold of the kind of thoughts that are exactly in harmony with what God has offered to us and said to us. That's so good. You know, um, when spirit, soul, body, you said just at the top of the broadcast, talk about overcoming by faith, really laying hold, some of the things that you and Miss Vicki learned early in your uh, life together in marriage and ministry. Um, really, that's the case with your soul and with your body and your flesh too. Now, there are things that we do, right? It, it's, it's just a gift from the Father. Uh, spiritually, we uh, believe that the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead, confess him as, with our mouth, believe in our heart, then we're made born again. Our spirit man is saved. The Bible then tells us to take some more steps, to renew our mind, crucify our That's flesh, right. because uh, we're still living in a sin system. This, this world is dominated by sin. Even though we're in it, we're not of the world, right? Jesus right. said in John 17, but we're in it. And so we have to uh, take these steps. But a lot of times people... Uh, think that they have to renew their mind, that that becomes a works mentality. Right. But they have to receive that by faith just like they did the new birth. Absolutely. Isn't that right? Let, let me read a statement here. Uh, we should probably read from the Bible at some stage. Let's do that. Yes, sir. So We're ready to rock. Let me read something right along this line that, okay. that leads right into that concept. That's good. And here's what he said. It's a familiar passage from the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 where it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove or demonstrate what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. I love this concept because it gives us such, such hope that anything that God has planned for us, it is his will. We have access to walk in it. That's right. We can know it and we can walk in it and receive the power of it, yeah. but it takes this transformation. Yes, sir. And the transformation, as we've already said, it's not an instantaneous thing. It's not something that happens automatically. Right. The new birth does. Once you make Jesus Lord, there is this instant infusion in a millisecond yes. of that new birth. Oh, glory. But the transformation he's talking about here, this metamorphosis that we go through, it begins with the new birth, but it is facilitated by the new thoughts, a renewing of our mind, and a, a new system of thinking, a new way of and, viewing things. In a lot of ways, it's almost like the gate. To, we can either lock that gate in our soul and keep spiritual things at bay from coming out of us, or we can renew our mind to allow ourselves the capacity to unleash the spiritual things in our life. And exactly. really, really, we have control over that, don't we? That's a perfect way to, to say it. We do yeah. have control, whether we're going to be fed out of our inner man, our spirit, yes, or if we're going to have circumstances or the things that are happening around us and surrounding us, if we're going to have that dominate our thoughts, and shut down the power of the Spirit of God that is within. That's it's good. really a soulish, or in, in this 
in, in this reading, it is a mind game that Satan tries to play to keep us in our flesh, to keep us uh, tied to our past, right. to keep us condemned by things that we've really been redeemed from. You know, God said very clearly, he said when we come to know him, he said we would, he would remember our sins no more. Oh, glory to God. One of my favorite passages. It is such a liberating It's going to say freedom. That's exactly what I was going to say is freedom. freedom. Yeah. That God is not going back over our past and reminding us of how we <laughs> yeah. failed at this and messed up that and, and, uh, and we stay weak and really uh, d uh, condemned by yes. those past things that Jesus actually redeemed us from. You know what? By the Spirit of God, I want to say to you right now, if you just heard what he said, you might need to go back a few seconds and listen to that again. Receive it by faith. And if that's not the view that you have of God, if you've got a view of God uh, that he's just waiting, you know, writing down all the things that he can get you for and all these kind of things, you need to renew your mind to what he's talking about. So listen up, I'm telling you. Because really, this verse of scripture, I was reading it one time, and uh, of course, these aren't written in chapter and verse. And I notice, sometimes I notice these little things. There's a little paragraph mark on chapter 11, verse 33. It says, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. And uh, you know well and have taught this that, that not, wisdom is the ability to use knowledge, right? Yes. Uh, so it's not just knowledge about God so you can win a trivia contest. It's his knowledge about your situations and circumstances to get you over. It says, what well, it says, uh, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. It says, who hath known the mind of the Lord and who, or who has been his counselor? And then that sounds like bad news. That doesn't sound like good news. It's like, how can we get this? But then it goes right into what you're talking about. It says, so I beseech you to uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice. And I'll just say one more thing before I send it back to you. I asked the Lord, I used to be bothered by that. Like, Lord, what do you mean present my body a living sacrifice? Most sacrifices die, right? Um, but he, he shared with me that in my body is where is housed my mind, my will, my emotions, and really, and particularly, my five senses. Mm. What I see, hear, feel, taste, and touch. He said, you got to kill those things and present those as sacrifice so you can hear the depth of the riches and wisdom. That's, That's how you got to renew your mind. And so that just all flows together, and it's just, man, I'm just I'm drawing it out of you. When, our, when yeah. our senses are dominating us. Yeah. Just what you brought up. When our senses dominate us and tell us the truth that we are going to live by, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to miss the mark. That's exactly right. And uh, even though our senses, God gave them to us, they're not <laughs> right. evil in themselves. Sure, absolutely. But they're not designed to lead us and dominate us. We are designed to live out of the deposits of God and the promise of the power of God. This is why it's so important that we are in Scripture, that we're meditating on God's Word, That's that we're it. allowing Him to give us help and light to really see steps that we are to take. Oh, that's so good. And brother. to grasp the wisdom of God so that it's a workable knowledge, so that knowledge from the Word becomes something we can enact and we can really act on in our own life. Yes, sir. So that when, for example, I feel in my body, my senses are telling me that, man, my body is just sick. I just <laughs> hurt all over more than anywhere else. And it's just not going right. Yeah. There, are, there is a truth there you go. in God's word that said that by his stripes, Jesus, yes. I am healed. Yeah, or right. you, you we were, were healed, yes. past tense. And if you were, then you are. Amen. That's the truth. Yes, sir. And so here's the, the battle that we deal with in our head. We have a truth from God's word and we have a fact from our own body and the way it feels. <laughs> And we have to decide if we're going to live by the facts. That's good. Which seems to be appropriate until you realize that when the truth is different from the facts, God's word is always truth. Then we have to make the choice that we're going to take the truth and apply the truth to the facts yes. and attack the facts with the truth yes. so that the truth prevails. Yeah. This is how we renew our mind to the truth and live by the word rather than the circumstances around us. That's right. It is vital oh, man. that we make this a habit of the way we go at it. And 
No, a lot of times it's not all that easy. Right. Your body's talking to you, screaming at you. You're getting reports that aren't that good or, or whatever's going on. But faith takes hold of what God has said and uses it like a weapon of war. Yes. And uh, takes these words of God, in this case, like medicine. That's what Scripture is described as, that His words are like medicine. That's right. Meditate in the Word. Amen. So that you are attacking the facts with the truth until those facts harmonize with the truth. Right. That's what faith really does. Well, and Jesus described, he, as you said in church yesterday, Jesus is perfect theology. Yes. So He is an exact express, the King James says in Hebrews 1, 3, He's a, a, the express image of the Father. So if you want to see what the Father looks like and how He operates and what His will is and His desires are for man, look no further than Jesus. And Jesus was in the fact-changing business. Yes, He it's was. It's a fact that water doesn't become wine in a jar. It's a fact that you can't walk on water. It's a fact that a tree, a fig tree, doesn't dry up from the roots in 12 hours. I mean, all the 24 hours. It's All these facts were changed when truth came on the scene. Yes. Yeah. A word from God shifted yes. things. Yeah. And uh, that's really alive for us right now. That's the example that we have to live by, that we can see that a word out of our own mouth, not only a word in Scripture, and this right. is real important, yeah. that we can take a word in Scripture, a written word, the logos of God, and uh, put it in our mouth and it turns into a spoken word. Yes. A rhema is the Greek word. Yes. A rhema word from God and that's where there is a release of power. Yeah, dynamic power. So exactly. we're really a part of it. That word rhema uh, it, and, and the power that it releases, a spoken word, it releases dunamis, dynamo power, yes. dynamic power. But that word dunamis really is not only explosive power, and we get our word dynamite, you can hear it in that, but it is also a word to describe a, a force of nature, hurricane force yes. or tornado type force. It's also a word that would be used of an advancing mighty army and that when the word is spoken out of our mouths, we are saying what God says. That's we're in good. agreement with it, not just once, but in conversation and all the different times That's that we're good. involved, that we are releasing something. We are harmonizing or aligning our life, our soul with the truth of God's Word and what God has placed on the inside of us, uh, the seed of this Logos of God. Yes. And now we're releasing power That's and so in harmony and alignment with what God really wants to do through us. This is what the renewing of the mind is really all about. Yeah. It is bringing alignment between the spirit and the soul. I yes. love that word to help us understand Alignment. the power yeah. of how you live and what it means to renew our mind. That's true. Well, it's, it's, if you look at it <clears throat> a different way um, or at a different angle, same mountain from a different angle, um, we, there really are only two kingdoms, right? Okay. There's the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of God, kingdom of light. And so you really, people that have that inner struggle and they don't know how to put their finger on it, like how, what is this? When your spirit man is, is born again, is alive in Christ Jesus, and you're, it's designed and destined, literally born by the regeneration of the, of the water of the word, and now it's living in the kingdom system. But if your soul and flesh, your body, are not also aligned in the kingdom system, you've got the kingdom of God, but then you've got all these other um, filters that you've built up over the years. Um, I say all the time, I could preach to 150, 200 people. I could say one thing. They can hear it 200 different ways because right. maybe they had a parent or a teacher say, you never do this or you can never be anything or whatever. So these things have built up over time uh, and really created strongholds in our mind. Um, so how, how can somebody get in alignment with the kingdom and really just tangibly pull their soul out of that place of darkness? You know, that's a great question, and we, we'll go into it probably a little deeper even in the next session. Okay. But, uh, you know, for me, I came to understand that when Scripture tells us to meditate in God's Word, yes. part of this meditation, it's not just pondering things, but it is really shifting the operating system that is on the inside of us right. so that we are thinking in a manner that is in harmony with God. 
to yes. meditate in God's Word is to read it, it is to write it, mm -hmm. it is to ponder it, it is to imagine it working in our life. That's right. And it is a tool that we continue to operate in so that our mind is getting familiar with the ways of the Spirit of God and the ways of the Word and the ways that yes. are deposited in us. And it becomes more of a habit as time goes on as we meditate. We learn That's to good. guard our heart. That's, That's what Proverbs good. chapter 4 tells us. Too. Yes, sir. We put a guard over what we allow yeah. to be the dominant thought pattern. Yeah. Because all the issues of life flow out of your heart. They, they, they flow out of that, that place where the operating system has been programmed right. uh, to do so. And the Hebrew word for meditating, it, it really also has a connotation of uttering and muttering and speaking, like you were talking before, speaking that dynamic rhema word over yourself. It does. I wrote a book a lot of years ago now on how to meditate in God's Word, specifically yes, this issue. Yes, sir. And I go into some of these different facets of what meditation is, that it's not only to think or to ponder, but it's right. also to imagine, right. but it is also to mutter. It's That's right. to say things. Yes. It's to speak things. Yeah. And, you know, we do it all the time. We, uh -huh. You know, you can lose your keys at the house and say, you walk around the house talking to yourself, where are those keys? What happened to my keys? I know I've got them. I haven't, bad, bad, bad. We just, we're saying things. We're imagining and trying to envision where these keys are. Right. But we're saying things that are actually contrary to that. That's good. And there's just something powerful that we have access to and that we can we can interject and, and make a decision to uh, meditate on God's Word and put God's Word first place. He said yes. meditate in the Word day and night. Day and night. That's right. got to be more than reading. <laughs> that absolutely is. Yeah, well, a lot of other religions, I mean, they, they paint a picture of meditation just, you know, just sitting there in serene peace. Yeah. But what the enemy will try to do every time is give you a partial truth, but the Bible says specifically for the believer that faith without corresponding action is dead. That's right. And so for us, it's wonderful to clear your mind of all the other garbage and all that kind of stuff. I'm not, I don't condone New Age anything. But I'm just saying, right. it's, it's one thing to calm your mind and, and just meditate on something the way that most people think of meditation. It's a whole different thing to go down the road you're talking about and have corresponding action to really see that working in your life. It really is different. Yeah. It's, it's much more, as you already said, than emptying our mind. Right. It's really filling our mind. <laughs> we, granted, we're going to empty out the things that have been condemning us or the yes. things in our past that we've been chained to. You know, those chains really have been broken unless we, you know, kind of fix them and put them back. <laughs> right. And uh, so we don't have to stay chained. But uh, meditation is to say what God says. It is really the filter the way of filtering out what comes into our dominant thoughts. Yes, that's we good. We meditate, and when something comes at us, some piece of information, or you know, you're watching a television program, and here comes a advertisement to tell you that it is flu season, <laughs> and here's what you need to do: get your shots. Get Come your get shots, your shots. <laughs> get your pills. Get your new pajamas. Get a fluffy pillow. You're going to be spending some time. It's going to be bad, and all this kind of thing. And people often, often, the whole idea of advertising is to get you to act on that. Yes, sir. Get it in your head. Get it in your thinking, so that you will buy their product. Right. But here's what meditation can do for you. You get the habit of meditating in God's Word. And when they announce to you that it's flu season, here's what I do. If I hear that, I just talk right back to it. Jesus talked to trees. I'll talk to the TV or to some commercial or advertisement billboard and just say, if, if it's telling me it's flu season, for example, I just announce it out loud. No, nope, not at my house. Not at my house. That's no right. No flu here. No <laughs> fear here. I'm not living by that in the name of Jesus. And, and you know, it kind of becomes a fun sort of thing. But yeah. it, it is the filter. That's right. That we are aggressively acting on what God has said, that I have That's the good. right to be healed and stay well. This is what the scripture tells us, that God would show us his salvation. He Amen. would deliver us from plagues and disease, that we don't have to live with the diseases of the world, that we are redeemed from the curse. These are all promises, man. But you have to take hold of these things so that they are personally alive yes, in your thinking. Yes, sir. They are real. They're true in the word. 
but they have to be your truth. Yes. Oh, you that's so make good. Them true in that's your so own good. Thinking and thought pattern. Yeah. We're coming up on the end of our time here for this uh, installment. Um, I'll just say this. This came up on, on the inside of me as you're talking. Really, it's not a Christian system and other system. God only created one system. He, you know, when he created the system of how we live and move and have our being, it was designed to be in him. Those advertisements and those other things, it's just a distortion of God's system. It They're really trying is. to get you sidetracked and over here. So uh, our family takes flu shots plenty, but we never we don't put them in our arm. We get out of God's word. That's yeah, right. When it's vaccine time, we come and get in the word of God. And I take my vaccine and I say, thank you, Jesus, that the blood of Jesus has, uh, has been a hedge of protection around me since the day that I was born again. And glory be to God, yeah. no plague will come nigh our dwelling. Yeah. And um, so anyway, I just uh, I, that just came up on the inside of me. Absolutely. A lot of times people think, well, um, I, I need to really learn how to do this system. Well, no, you don't. You've been doing it your whole life. <laughs> That's right. You've been doing it your whole life. You just need this to be in your heart in abundance so it'll come out your mouth right. instead of the other stuff. It's developing those new habits. Isn't yes, it? sir. That new yes, habit sir. of how we're going to uh, think and what we're going to allow in our mind and, and we guard our heart, but we begin to create a new habit. Right. And the moment you recognize that you are defaulting back to the way you've always done it in, in fear or in uh, envisioning how bad it is or how much worse it's going to get. The moment you recognize, wait a minute, that's not the way I'm going to go at this. I'm going to use that concept of envisioning or imagining or seeing right. or speaking, but I'm going to do it according to God's way and God's word and take the truth That's good. instead of the circumstances to define my days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother, I love you so much. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I pray that you enjoyed this as much as I have. I don't know if that's possible, but I pray you did. We're going to have a, dis yeah, in the description of the video down below, we're going to have the information on how you can get in contact with Dennis Burke Ministries and get some of their material, lots of audio teaching, lots of books by not only Dr. Dennis Burke, uh, but also his lovely uh, wife, Miss Vicki Burke. Um, so we're going to have that information available for you. Thank you so much. Remember, Jesus is Lord. And and you are complete in him. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and share this video with a friend today. And remember, most importantly, that Jesus is Lord and you are complete in him.